Hi, in this tutorial we'll be taking an in-depth look at state machines, what they are, what they do, and how they can help us. First, let's talk about what they are and what they can do for us. A state machine allows us, as a developer, to code states in our objects. This means that if we think about a treasure chest, it can have four different states. Idle, if we click on it, then it can change to opening, can run an animation and then stay opened, and then finally, if we click on it again, it can be closing. Now, what we can do as a developer is we can program each of these states and how they will interact with each other. This will also make it easier for us to maintain our code. We'll be able to add new states and transitions from one state to another without having to worry about forgetting something. So before we jump into the coding of the states, let's get a quick understanding of enumerators. An enumerator is like a struct and we can define it as a variable, but instead of assigning values to it, GameMaker will automatically convert them into integers. So let's take the following. When we run our game, GameMaker will convert idle to zero, opening to one, and so on. This allows us to easily add new states if we forgot them or remove them if we don't need them anymore. So let's take this knowledge and create a simple treasure chest that we can click on. Once we click on it, we'll change the state and have an animation run. In the example project, we've already created a room and the treasure chest object is inside. However, it's completely empty and we need to code it. If we take a look at the enumerators, you can find them inside the script file. Not only does this keep things organized, but also allows us to access this particular variable in any number of our objects, meaning that we can use these states for multiple objects if we need to. So now that we've already defined our states, let's switch over to the treasure chest object. And inside the create event, we need to create a variable that's going to keep track of what state our object is in. By default, let's set the state of our treasure chest to idle. This means that it will be closed and waiting for some form of interaction. Now let's go to the step event and let's add our skeleton for the state machine. Our state machine is going to work like a giant if else statement. We'll be checking the value of state and comparing it to the different states found in our numerator. Now we need to code what happens in each state. So thinking about our treasure chest, the idle state does nothing. For this example, this means that we're going to stay on the first frame and not animate. Now let's handle the opening state. This state will be used to run the animation of our treasure chest while it's opened. So let's set the image speed to 1. Now let's check to see if we are on the second last frame of our sprite. If we are, let's switch our state into the open state automatically. And now the open state is very similar to the idle state. We need to make sure that we do not have any animation, so we'll set the image speed to zero, and then we want to be on the last frame of our sprite. Our final state that we need to code is going to be the closing state. This is going to be reverse of the opening state, so this is going to be pretty simple. Let's make sure that we reverse our animation by using the image speed of negative one. Now we'll check to see if we are on the first or second frame of our sprite, and if we are, then we'll set our state to the idle state, which will then keep our treasure chest closed. Now that all the hard coding is done, we need to finish up the transitions. A transition will show how one state can move to the next. As a developer, it's our job to ensure the logic on what state comes next is in place. We'll also need to handle any cases where we might not want to say the idle state is going to jump all the way to the closing state. So we're going to make sure that we're going to account for this. Now, we've already made one or more transitions in our code. We said the treasure chest is going to be playing, and when it's on the second last frame, we're going to change the transition to the open state. Let's add the transitions from when we click on the treasure chest. We'll come up to left pressed, and the first one we want to do is if it is idle. So we'll ensure that our state is currently set to the idle state, and if it is, all we need to do is change our state into the opening state, and our step event will take over for us. We'll close off the if statement and write the final transition. If our treasure chest is already opened, then what we want to do is change our state into the closing state. Now we should be able to run our game and see our treasure chest sitting there waiting for interaction. If I come over and click on my treasure chest, we'll have the animation play and then it sits in the open state. If I click again, the animation will reverse until we get to the idle state. I can double click and it will only play the animation once, and that's just because of how we coded it. Now this is a very simple state machine. These types of machines can be used for many different things, from treasure chests, and buttons, all the way to coding your players, enemies, and even bosses. Once you've mastered the basics of a state machine, hopefully you'll start using them in your code to help simplify your life. And with that, I hope this video helped you, and I'll see you in the next one.